Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is gonna be on Th1 and Th2 immune balance. We're gonna go over what that is, how it affects your body, what we can do if we have an imbalance in our immune system. All right, so let's dive in. Before we do, hit the subscribe button below, hit the bell to get notifications, and put your comments below. I wanna know what you're thinking, and also ideas for future topics. So. Let's dive in. What's the Th1 and Th2 immune response? So we have our Th1 over here. Let's draw a little seesaw, okay? So here's our Th1 and Th2 immune responses. We have our little seesaw, okay? So for instance, if the Th1 is down, that means it's heavier. We have an increased Th1 and a decreased Th2 because the Th2 is lighter. Our Th1 is our cytotoxic immune response. Think of it as like the Navy SEALs. It's the special forces. These are the, the invaders that are gonna go in. These are our special forces that are going in to attack and to meet the invaders head on. It's our first line defense. In this analogy, that would be like our CD4 cells or our CD8 um, natural killer cells, all right? So this is our immune response. We have Th1, Th2, Th17, Treg. Our Th1 cells are gonna be down here, our CD4, and our killer cells. So these are the cells right here that make up this Th1 response. They're the special forces. With our Th2, these are gonna be more of the antibodies that happen after the fact. Think of the, the Th2 guys as the infantry that comes in a couple days to a week later behind the special forces. So for instance, that's gonna be our B cells here, and that's gonna be our antibodies, IgG, IgM, IgA, et cetera. So these are coming to the show a little bit late. Our Th1 guys are coming to the show sooner. All right, so just kind of keep that in the back of your head. So Th1 are gonna be our cytotoxic. These are intercellular invaders, bacteria, viruses, parasites. Th2 is gonna be more of our humoral antibody immune response, more extracellular type of invaders, if you will, all right? So we're gonna have a shift in our Th2 immune system when we're trying to not attack a growing baby or fetus in our body, or if we were to have like a joint implant or an organ transplant issue, or if we got like an autograph ACL put in our knee. So our Th2 immune system may go more dominant when we're in one of those situations. If it's Th1, it may go up more if we're trying to fight one of those intercellular invaders, right? Boreella or Lyme or a bacteria or a virus or a parasite, these are all potential reasons why our immune system would go Th1 up, right? Intercellular invaders, like I mentioned, or maybe Th2 up if you get pregnant or if you have a chronic allergies, right? Due to a increased hyper-responsive immune response, those could all be part of it. So let's dive in. So how do we get our immune cells to begin with? We have these kind of non-differentiated T cells here, these Th0. Now, these are produced by the thymus. So our thymus makes, that's the gland that sits right kind of underneath our, our, um, our sternum here. And these can produce Th0, and Th0 can go Th1, Th2, Th17, and Treg. The ones I want you focusing on today are the Th1 and the Th2. These are the, really the most important. Now, Th1, the compounds produced by Th1 are gonna be interferon, TNF-alpha. These are all going after intercellular invaders. With our Th2, we're having more interleukins or cytokines. These are like chemical messengers, and when our immune system tips in, in that Th2 direction, we're gonna see more interleukin 4, 5, 10, 13. And these are going after this is gonna be more influenced extracellularly. And Th2 will go up as a protective mechanism in pregnancy in those situations I mentioned earlier. Now, these guys, Th17 and Treg, they're gonna be highly influenced. They're gonna have a modulatory effect, almost acting like a finger on the scale to tip it in favor of one direction or the other. So things like, um, let's say low glutathione can have a major effect on TH17. Vitamin D can have a major effect on the T regulatory cells. Um, just stress in general. Also, just things like reducing inflammation, omega-3 fatty acids and reducing inflammation through emotional, physical, and um, mental stress, that can have a major effect on modulating the TH1, TH2, but not in one direction or the other, but just as a whole, it's, just, it's beneficial in modulating. So think of TH17 and TA reg as kind of these fingers on the scale that can kind of help bump it in one direction or the other. Now, when we look at Th1, there are compounds that we can use to stimulate Th1, right? We know certain autoimmune conditions 
tend to be Th1 dominant, like Hashimoto's, lupus, various autoimmune conditions tend to be more Th1 dominant, higher conditions. We know a lot of Th2 tend to be more like systemic issues. I actually think lupus may actually be Th2, but a lot of other Th1s are led to be autoimmune stuff like Hashimoto's, uh, MS, um, you can just think of any autoimmune type 1 diabetes. These are all potential variables here. More systemic issues, I think lupus is going to be in the TH2 category. A lot of hay fever, chronic allergies, chronic asthma, chronic hyperactive immune responses are going to be in that TH2 dominant area. Now the compounds that we use to support or to increase TH1 are going to be like medicinal mushrooms, andrographis, echinacea, astragalus. These are good TH1 boosters. And then we have our TH2 boosters tend to be things like caffeine or green tea or resveratrol, pycnogenol. Um, these are various polyphenols and bioflavonoids that bump up TH2. Now, I'm not a big fan of coming in there and just modulating the immune response for TH1 or for TH2. Um, I think that can be a little bit palliative. Like caffeine's a big one for TH2. So if someone tells me, oh, when I have coffee, it really makes me feel terrible. Well, that may make me think they're already TH2 dominant because caffeine does increase TH2. So I look at a lot of these compounds not as a means of which one to give to bump up the immune system in that favor. I just look at it as a way to collect data. Now, the question becomes why is that TH1 immune response present? So for instance, if we know that TH2 dominance can also happen from mercury because mercury depletes glutathione and low glutathione can have an impact on bumping up TH2. So the question is, is mercury behind that? Is there imbalances in cortisol and progesterone, estrogen dominance? Is there, because we know that Basically, um, we can have estrogen dominance can skew our natural killer cells, our CD8 versus CD4. That can skew it in favor of our helper cells. So we know estrogen dominance could skew this TH1 immune balance. Things like gluten sensitivity could easily predispose an autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's, for instance, and that could drive TH1 dominance. So, and obviously leaky gut is a big mechanism behind a lot of autoimmune conditions. So is it the chicken or the egg? Is the TH1 or TH2 immune response happening as a, an effect or a cause? Now, my opinion is it's more of an effect, not the cause. So it's good to look at it, but we're not gonna be so hyper-focused on it that we're ignoring the cause. So we're looking at the root underlying issues with the gut, with the immune response, with food, with infections, with hormone issues, with nutrient deficiencies, with digestion. So in general, how our immune system works is we have an antigen, which is a foreign compound. It could be a food, it could be a parasite antigen, and then basically our body, our first line defense is Th1. We make our helper cells, CD4, and our natural killer cells, which are also known as CD8. I'll write that down here. So we have this natural CD4 to CD8 balance. And then from here, this is where the Th2 response comes in. We start to make our B cells, which then can become antibodies. All right, and then we have our little macrophages that come out because of our CD4, which are our little Pac-Men and Pac-Women that gobble up the bacteria, the virus, the parasite. So our immune response is really important to start gobbling it up, and then we make our infantry later on with the antibodies. Now our TH1, right, autoimmune conditions specific, right, and acute infections. So autoimmune Hashimoto's and acute infections, parasites, viruses, and then our TH2, autoimmune disease systemic. So lupus is kind of in this category. Um, some say parasites can also be TH2 as well. Some say it can be TH1. When I do a lot of the research on this, they're kind of conflicting, but some say TH2 for parasites, allergic responses, and then systemic autoimmune conditions where Th1 is more specific autoimmune, kind of isolated organs, if you will. Of course, autoimmunity affects everywhere, but more organ specific, this is more systemic to the body. So if you're looking at this and you're scratching your head, what do I do? Well, the key thing is if you're noticing or if you're thinking about maybe you have an immune issue or certain compounds like Th1 compounds like echinacea or additional mushrooms, astragalus, andrographis, these things make you feel worse, maybe there's a TH1 dominant issue. If you know you have an autoimmune condition that's organ specific, you're more than likely TH1 dominant. And if you have a lot of allergies and a lot of systemic issues, it could be a TH2 issue, especially if you feel worse with green tea or coffee or those kind of things. So it's not 100%. Some people can be TH2 dominant and still do great with coffee. It's not perfect. It just kind of gives you a good window to look at it. But we want to look at what's the root cause, why is, our, why is the immune system out of balance, and not just try 
try to palliative push end, push one end of the scale versus the other. Get to the root cause. So if you're having autoimmune issues or immune issues in general, and this issue fascinates you and you want to dive in deeper, click down below, schedule a consult with myself and colleagues. We can dive in, look deeper at what the root issue is. Could be hormone, could be gut, could be diet related, could have gut permeability issues, could have infections. Get to the root cause. I see a lot of the immune issues as an effect, not necessarily the cause, but we want to get our focus on what the cause is. So if you guys enjoyed it, thumbs up, hit the subscribe, get the bell for notifications, and put your comments down below. Really curious about what you're thinking, and feel free and reach out. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.